you guys are gonna have to accept that. Just right. Just deal with it. That's, that's your, your that's problem. That's your resolutions. Yeah. Accept our flaws. We didn't ever intend to go into hosting a fucking radio show. <laughs> yes. So we're doing the best we can. Quit fucking critiquing <laughs> us. But this is not our skill set. I, I don't know anything about technology. I had a fat alcoholic walk me through this. Yeah, this is hard. And everyone's like, your sound is off. And I'm like, it's fine. It's fine. It's good enough. <laughs> Thank you. Let it go. Oh, yeah. Off. Happy New Year! And welcome to Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank Podcast. Oh, I, I just realized now what I wanted to tell you in the introduction about my fucking epic journey. Journey's a little bit heavy. Trip. Trip. Journey's a little heavy-handed. When you say epic journey, it means either um, spirit walk or ayahuasca. Uh, I took a trip. What a fun December I had. Listen, today in the podcast, Sarah Tolomash is here from the Lady Journey podcast. Uh, we just went over from San Antonio, Texas, went over all our ridiculous <laughs> ideas of what we can do better this year. Um, it's not resolutions. They're they're moronic. They're really out there ones. Um, yeah, because we were both, she's like, I don't really do resolutions. And I'm like, you know what? I barely stick to them. So like, let's just go for it. So we just chose ones that we have no chance. And that's what I suggest to you guys. Either pick resolutions that you have no chance. Because if you're going to fail, why not fail, you know what I mean, at the highest level? Why not fail from the top down rather than from the bottom down? And then also, why not resolve to just continue the mistakes you've been making? You know, uh, I'm late all the time. I'm not going to change that. I'm going to accept who I am. That's what I say. I mean, we're January 10th, 11th now. Can we even do resolutions? I say yes. So that's what we did in the podcast. We sat in a gym in San Antonio, Texas, in a gym we were not using. <laughs> she was like, should we be using these, this treadmill that we're on, that we're sitting on? And I was like, no, because that, that would show resolve. And what we're actually doing is non-resolve. Can I tell you about my trip? Maybe I'll tell you about it next time. I mean, it was so fucking great. Ah, I guess I got to do it next time. Real quick, uh, let me do my dates. I'm going to be in uh, in Cleveland, Ohio this weekend with Adrian Appalucci, the Dark Queen, uh, January 14th, 15th, and 16th. The 16th is Martin Luther King Day. It's also the day that the Dallas Cowboys take on the San Francisco 49ers, and it will end, my prediction, in disappointment for me. Uh, the weekend after that, I'll be in uh, Stand Up Live in Phoenix, um, the 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Get tickets for both shows at AriShafir.com. Um, oh, just added. Uh, this is not, well, nope, 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 nope. An Ari Shafir's <laughs> renamed storytelling show in New York City at the Gramercy Theater. February 8th, tickets are on sale tomorrow, Wednesday, I believe, at noon o'clock. Um, get tickets. Also, at noon on Wednesday is uh, the Detroit shows and the uh, other Michigan shows. The, where's, what's that other Michigan place called? Royal Oak? Nope, nope, nope. Something with two words. I should know this. March. Grand Rapids. Grand Rapids, Michigan. Me, Robert Kelly, and Big J Okerson. You can get artist presale for the fastest tickets um, at arishavir.com, but use the promo code ROGAN. Wednesday at 10 a.m. or noon uh, until for 24 or 36 hours, and then, you, then it's on the venue presale and then regular sale. So, Get in there and get tickets right then. Me, Robert Kelly, Bobby Kelly, Big J Okerson. Take Michigan, March 25th, 26th. Um, that's it. Oh, oh, oh. And then February, I'll be in Tampa. That's right. So Gramercy on February 8th in New York. Tampa, the 11th and 12th. Denver, Colorado. February 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th. We just added uh, February 17th show, February 
uh, I think 19th is sold out already. So hurry up and get tickets. And then Vancouver, Washington. On February 27th, and I have live this uh, um, yoga with Ari. Yeah, I'm going to teach another class. I did it at Skankfest. It was great. So, I don't know. Maybe we should just start the episode. I mean, what are we even dilly-dallying for? I do have... Bandit, Bandit, where, where, where are you going? I do have a lot to tell. Should I tell you about the trip? God, I wanted to get into it. But then so much shit has happened that I want to talk about too. Ari, you got to be focused. Okay, I, w- I want to talk about this trip. I'll, I'll summarize it for you. I went from Boston, the Wilbur Theater, sold out, fucking great show. Sal Volcano, surprise opener. Everybody there <laughs> fucking loved it. Um, straight from there to Dominican Republic, where I spent five or six days gaining 13 pounds off Chicharron and Pernil. Went to a baseball game. There was a power outage. Dude, they play baseball, right? So I heard from Ian Laura uh, about up, 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 nope, and down. Um, he said Albert Pujols is playing in Dominican Republic for the first time in his career. So I was like, I gotta go. I went. He didn't play that day. God, this is getting into it. I don't want to get into it, dude. There was a power outage. Uh, I'll do it next week. I'll do it next week. Um, but then so much has happened. Betty White, Betty White finally lost her virginity <laughs> to the devil, where he's fucking her around a bunch of ghouls and goblins. That's right. Betty White was an evil person. She's dying in hell. She's being fucked to death by evil goblins and ghouls and the devil. How else do you live to be 99? Um, no, here's what I wanted to talk about. Jeff Garland was dismissed from the, a show that I never watched, The Goldbergs. But guys, here, so here's when you hear about a cancellation, you go, why would I don't know, ABC uh, cancel uh, or, or fire him from a hit show for this? For, for Here's what he did. He would sit in a chair all day. He plays a dad on that show, I think. He'd sit in a chair all day. Then when he'd stand up, he goes, oh, my vagina hurts. And then a weak-willed, thank you, Chappelle, for that term, a uh, weak-spirited young person, said, well, that goes too far. That's technically something I'm allowed to complain about, and so I will. Now, if this was uh, before social media days when no one could get the word out about you being angry, that person's boss would go, you need to shut the fuck up. You say that shit again about a guy whose reason we're here, the reason we're all making money, you're fired. He didn't say your vagina hurts. He said my vagina hurts. It's a joke because Jeff Garland, and though I don't know him very well, I know him well enough, Actually, I can't say this with certainty. Jeff, you know what, buddy? I, I, I like you. Um, I've, I've had conversations with you. I've riffed you with you on stage before. But I cannot, I cannot in good conscience say whether or not you have a pussy. You might have one. And if that's true, then you still didn't do anything wrong. You're complaining about your own fucking vagina. It's your cunt. It's not the cunt's cunt. It's your cunt. So you get fired. And so then first you think, why would ABC fire him? It's not ABC. It's some executive. Here's what you got to think about. These people aren't, they don't bleed ABC or CBS or NBC. I don't know what it's on. I think ABC. They don't bleed for the, they're not like a sports team. They're not like a fucking uh, army, you know, who's like, I'll die for my country. These guys ain't going to die for ABC. They're happy they got a hit show. It's a sitcom. Get over yourselves, you know. (laughs) No one cares, you know. But what they're trying to do is they're trying to get another job somewhere else. They're trying to get a job at Netflix next or HBO or, or, or some studio or, or something unrelated. And they don't want their name being attached to defending uh, a quote-unquote abuser who <laughs> said his vagina hurts. <laughs> this country's doomed. This country's doomed. Until somebody's willing to tell people like that, you need to shut the fuck up. Or not even get mad at them. Just start making fun of them. Oh, are you upset he made fun of his vagina? Oh. So he got fired from his show. (laughs) It's out of control. Because nobody wants to tell that person to shut up. So if they do, then they might be on the record as they'll spin it. You know how they'll spin it. They'll spin it as um, takes the abuser's side, uh, victim blames, shit like that. And they're like, I don't need this. I don't need this. I don't give a shit. We're making sitcoms. We're not doing anything of importance. We're actually making America dumber. We're actually making America less intelligent through what we've done. And it's not even new. At least when I Love Lucy was around, it was a new format. Now they're just fucking, 
following the, the the blueprint of everything that's come before you. You're a good girl, Bandit. So you're, you're making trash. So you can't even rest your laurels on that. So there's tr- they're they're fucking managers of a trash factory, and, and somebody came in and said, "Hey, uh, you know this trash factory? Well, one guy, you know, he makes ninety percent of the people here laugh and smile with his jokes. I I don't know. I think I'm supposed to not like it." I think I'm supposed to say that since you mentioned vagina, it reminds me of somebody telling they didn't like dirty jokes once and they said they're not smart. And then I quoted a David Tell joke where he said, um, pretty much, I'll see if I do it justice. He goes, you ever try a condom on inside out? It sounds like Todd Berry. You ever try a condom on inside out? Uh, it's dry. It's very dry. Like inside the actor's studio. Dry. It's a terrible impression. Uh, and so I told that chick, I was like, um, there's a witty joke, and it's, it's dirty about condoms. And she goes, nah, it's, con- it's about condoms. I don't like it. It's not funny. It's not witty. And I'm like, oh, you're just married to this idea. And these people are like, oh, I heard a guy say a, a, a sexy part word, so I should be upset. <laughs> Jeff, dude, I'm sorry you lost your job, but that sucks, dude. That is a funny way to lose your job. <laughs> My vagina hurts. <laughs> So that show, that's the chemistry of the show, right? They, they'll have one more season and they'll be done. And the lady in charge or the man in charge who had to make that call to fire Jeff Garland on the spot, not calling him to HR and say, hey, we need you to fucking talk to that girl and say your sorry. So, I mean, he said they told him not to say that anymore. And he goes, I will. And he goes, you'll get fired. And he said, what a funny thing to get fired for. <laughs> and it is. It is, Jeff. You're right. Uh Cleveland, Phoenix, Gramercy for our first live Ari Shafir's renamed storytelling show in a few years. Tampa, Denver, Vancouver. That's my January and February. Be nice. Be nice. Let's take a quick word from our sponsor, you guys. Because this episode is all about it's all about being better, doing better. And what a better way to do better than better help. God damn it, that flowed well. Betterhelp.com. If you use promo code Ari, uh, you can get 10% off your first month. Guys, it's not a crisis hotline. It is therapy. Why not? If you're making resolutions, make this the year, you finally do some therapy. And you don't want to sit in a car and sit in traffic where you're just going to be more mad. You The first 20 minutes of your therapy is like, what are you upset about? I'm like, uh, road rage, dude. I'm fucking pissed because this chick next to me cut me off. I'm trying to. So you need to therapize. You need to calm down. You need to get back to your non anxious self. You need to get back to your happy self. And better help has helped my friends do that. Chris Allen's done it. My other buddy's done it. Um... You go on there, they match you up with a therapist. If you don't like them, you fucking switch it out from the privacy of your own home, which means no pants on. You're at a desk with no pants on. Don't rub your balls while you're doing it, you know, above board, but no commute, dude. It's great. You just got to tell whoever you're living with to fucking kick rocks. Um, Yeah, betterhelp.com. Use promo code Ari. Get 10% off the first month. Um, Guys, it's already way cheaper than uh, traditional therapy, but it is, from what I understand, it's just traditional therapy, but it just, you know, over Zoom, but not. It's on their site. And so you could also leave comments and stuff, like if you're having a, a, not a breakthrough, or a breakthrough, or you have something to say, you could just like be on there and like tell them, and then the therapist will read it later. You don't have to like write notes. It'll just be on there. Um, anyway, it's great. It's a legit product that I stand behind, so you should get in there. Um Yeah. Should we start the episode? Oh, I got one more. One more ad read. I can't believe Jeff Garland got fired for that. That's crazy. And they're like, he won't be fired from, from Kirby Enthusiasm. You know why? Because they didn't get a dumb complaint. Also, Larry David will be like, we're not doing that. This world sucks. It's great. Technology's great. I can record a fucking podcast uh, on an iPhone that I've never put on service. What did you guys do for New Year's? I went to... Tahiti. Um, all right, let's 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 start the episode. Let's start the episode, shall we? We shall. I think I've told you everything I have to about the Gramercy, about the the, the March 25th, 26th shows with me and uh, Big J and, um, and Robert Kelly. I think we're going to do Fort Wayne, Indiana on that Sunday. 
Think of two shows at a club there. Oh, I just added Appleton. That's like April. Appleton, Buffalo, St. Louis, all in April. Appleton's already on sale. The rest's soon. Um, guys, let's start the episode. So this is all about how you can improve. Legitimately, here's my resolutions for the year. Read two books again. Um, right now I'm reading uh, How to Do Nothing by Jenny O'Dell. I read two books. I might try to read a novel this year. Two New Countries Again. I'm thinking Cuba. Hey, does anyone have a hookup for ski rentals um, for my friends? Like equipment rentals in, in, uh, in Vail um, or Park City? I need them. Does anybody reach out? Reach out. Oh, I got a new Instagram account, R.I.P. Ari Shafir. The other one, I still got no answer on whether we can like fucking get it back online. Because let's start the episode. Ari Shafir skeptic. Oh, so those are my resolutions. What else is there? Two new countries. I'll tell you when I'm done with them. Because I, I hate people telling what to do. So, but I've got two in mind already. One with Robert Kelly. And one, um, not with him. And then maybe I'll get a third. My two this past year at the buzzer, Dominican Republic and Tahiti, French Polynesia. Guys, let's start the episode. This is rambling and stupid. Ari Shafir, Skeptic Tank. Uh, you guys doing yoga with Ari? I hope you keep doing it. Subscribe to youtube.com slash Ari Shafir. Subscribe to my new Instagram account, R-A-P Ari Shafir. And subscribe to this podcast wherever you listen to it. Spotify, Apple, whatever. I'll be on Rogan's podcast next week with Shane and Mark Normand. Um, that'll be fucking fun as shit. Yep. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Ari Shavir Skeptic, episode 450 something, four maybe. Damn, that's a lot. Um, it's all about, you know, improving yourself for New Year's. Do better. <laughs> that's, I'm sure somebody said that to Jeff Garland. <laughs> if he's like, why are you upset about that? It's not your right to tell me what I should be upset about. I'm weak, and you have no right to tell me not to be a fucking weak loser. <laughs> My vagina hurts. <laughs> Some people are uncomfortable with that. I, the re, the real response, if no job was on the line, would be, oh. Okay. Cool, dude. Anyway. Um, 454-ish, 455 do better with Sarah Tolomash. Tolomashi. Good old Tolomashi, who killed when she was open for me in San Antonio. If you saw her there, you loved her. Um, check out our podcast, Lady Journey. And that's it. You guys, do better with Sarah Tolomash. Starts now. That's it. <laughs> we did it. We did it. Um, well, actually, you did it, and then I kind of watched. You did watch, but I did watch. It wasn't a judging watch, which yeah. really helped me along. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I try not to. Yeah. Even though I'm like pretty good at it. I think when they say behind every good man is a better woman or whatever, it yeah. just means someone who's not fucking going. Oh, the yeah, whole time. I wouldn't do it like that. Yeah. yeah. That's all we really need for, for as a man is a woman who's just not shitting on us while we're trying something. <laughs> and vice versa. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no eye rolling. <laughs> oh, your dumb friends coming over? Yeah. <laughs> what sh show is that? You watch that gay shit? Uh, yeah. <laughs> not that Joe does that, but I've been in relationships like that. Watch that dumb shit? You're like, yeah, I love dumb shit. That's my passion. Is it, oh, all your stuff is amazing? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You're the one who has only the amazing stuff that they watch. Yes. Your, your record collection of pink records is yeah, like, yeah. Hey, waiting for me to cancel you on. It's like when guys get mad at like when, or not mad, but like annoyed when girls are into pop culture. I'm like, it's our sports. Yeah. Like the way that you guys fawn yeah. over dudes on sports. That's Do, uh -huh. celebrity women are our really? thing. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I was with my first roommate, and he was watching the elections of 99, 96, maybe, whatever it was. Yeah, I think it's... And, and he was just up all night refreshing, refreshing, state by state. And I'm like, why do you watch that shit? Just find out tomorrow who wins. Like, yeah. Even then, I was like uh, apathetic. And he goes, like you could with sports? Yeah. And I'm like, touche. Fair. <laughs> fair. Enjoy your elections. God, that always sucks when somebody brings up a fair point. I'm like, God, you're yeah. right. Shit. I was leaving uh, Rogan's yesterday and I was getting snacks for the road to come to San Antonio. Yeah. I was hungry and it was like an hour and a half drive. And so, and Rogan has all these fucking protein snacks. It's never like Doritos. I know. And that stuff always gives me like insane amount of gas. 
It's not right. I don't it, think we're supposed to be eating that stuff. It's not right. I would say it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Morally, on a different yes. level than he expects. Like, just eat what Earth gave you naturally. <laughs> we're killing the ozone with those facts. Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> but I had these two fucking chips things. And then he was like, take one of these elk bars. It's all straight elk meat. And I was like, no, I already had one. It's too much meat. I, I can't, like, it's unhealthy. And then Tony Hitchcliffe was like, so the potato chips you're going to eat are more healthy? You're kind of, like, maybe. Sure? No, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> right, fair enough. Give me that elk bar. <laughs> um, thanks for coming this weekend. You've been killing it so far. Thank you. Your um, audience has been really nice to me. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like everybody, I think a lot of people have a misconception thinking that you have like an insane crowd, like a insane cl- clown posse kind of situation well, but you I don't enjoy trolling yeah they don't enjoy trolling they enjoy watching a yeah troll. they enjoy yeah yeah but generally they're all like game for uh anything that's I what think. uh roy wood said on tom segura's podcast he was talking about when he took over and he was like i mean and i, I had this problem where i couldn't really like go in and say hey comedy central drove me out and kind of blackmailed me to leave my own show yeah so i couldn't really say anything yeah it was just like when roy's name would come up in conversation i'm like he, he asked me i told him he should do it but like Publicly, it couldn't really. So he was like, his fans were mad. He goes, but in fairness, they never got racist. Yeah. Because I expected them to get racist. But you're like, why would they? I feel like you don't really, even in your act, go that way. It's all fake racism. Yeah, yeah. The funny kind. Yeah, the funny, where you're like, (laughs) you know this is wrong. That's why. Yeah, like it's so (laughs) outlandishly (laughs) ignorant. You ever hear Jerry Roach's? Yeah, Jerry Roach's joke about that? No. His uncle's too racist to get racist jokes. Oh, yeah, yeah. You say a racist joke, goes, I know, they are like that, right? Yeah, (laughs) that's that's why it's always like, you're like, fuck. That's why sarcasm, we were talking about that earlier. When somebody doesn't get it, it's a horrific fail on your part. It's it's tough, because then they just think you're serious. And then sometimes a complete fucking idiot. And you just have to sit there with knowing that somebody thinks you're an idiot. And, and sarcasm on certain subjects are worse than others. Like that Uber yeah. driver that dropped us off, we were playing Christmas music, and I was like, is this Van Halen? He goes, no, it's Christmas music. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Ugh. I will tell you, I do do that in certain situations if I don't like somebody, and I know that they're being that way I'll always answer that stuff earnestly because it makes me laugh um to be that way just go no it's well, not it's a Christmas song yeah well I had a moment uh when I first moved to New York I was on the train and this guy I don't know what he was doing I guess the term would be like whatever the artist not the what's the pickup artist that that thing the I don't want to say negging because everyone's like thinks you're saying the n-word but I just said it <laughs> It's a tough like, one. It is borderline. Yeah. It is borderline. Like, it's better. Just get rid of that word, too. <laughs> better safe than sorry. And, but he was like. Marissa, can you put a, a under when she said that? Make yeah, sure to pop a up disclaimer, the word nagging. Yeah, disclaimer, please. I'll do it again there. <laughs> Although nobody's going to cancel me at this point. Um, but he, I don't know what it was. I had this keychain and he was, I think he was trying to like flirt. But he was like, what is that? Like some kind of dildo? And I just answered it like, no, it's not a dildo. And the, I just did that the whole time he was trying to do it. And I was having like the best time ever. It's so fun. I like when a comedian doesn't get that you're joking. Or they're, they're not even thinking that you're joking. They're just answering because they want to say something. Yeah. So you're like, uh, you, you'd be like, you know, what is that jacket? Did you kill that guy yourself to make it? You're like, no, no, I got it from a Gap store. It's like, so... Then I just go, so you did not kill the cow yeah. to get it? And then they realize like, oh, okay. I yeah. Wasn't even oh, listening. yeah, I'm an idiot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do it Thank to my you. mom a lot too. Yeah, they don't get that. Rest in peace. Um, Is she dead? No. Oh, She's okay. just like, I think it's kind on of the, her annoying. time zone. She's yeah. probably resting. I hope it's peaceful and the neighbors yeah. are not using their chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, yeah, they are. I wonder sometimes too if they're going to like take to new people. Adrian, they kind of already... Enough of them have heard of the her. Yeah. So you could hear sometimes where I'm like, please welcome Adrian. You could hear a couple like, all right. Like yeah. they don't know she's coming. Yeah, but like, excited. Yeah, I don't know how many of them know you. I don't know. I'd assume that there's people, because all those podcast people, um, listeners, listen to all of them. So mm-hmm. they pick up on everything. So I think they're probably at least aware that I'm there, but maybe, maybe you've never seen me do yeah. stand up. Not yeah. that my name probably gets dropped a lot in podcasts, but... I don't know. Joe mentions me. Joe think, mentions you. Yeah. Also, um, yeah, there's also just random Saturday night people that, yeah. come that have nothing to do with me. Like those two fucking. <laughs> yeah, it's like there's two women that sat in the front row Thursday night and I was like, what? I thought this was a, 
I thought I just assumed everyone there, at least in the front row, who would run to the front to to come to a show, but like let me sit up front. Yeah, would be into it. Not at all at one bit, and it threw me off. It, me for too. Sure. Yeah, you're like, what are you even doing here? And after a while, like you said, you want to be like, you should just go. Get out. But they didn't do anything enough to no. to want. the rest of the crowd would turn on you so hard. Absolutely. If you were yeah. just like two, never said a word, women. You should go, get out. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, what? You know what you did. You know, <laughs> you just get out. The looks, the one, the blonde one on, on like our left. They were like attractive. You could tell they were attractive in their in younger their years. Yeah. yeah. And they're uh-huh. still attractive, but they probably, you know what I'm trying to say. They're, <laughs> they're probably, they're, you, I think you're, I know what you're saying. They're yeah. jerky because they don't have the power they once had. Yes. Yeah. That's what it feels like. Yeah. yeah. But even when I was up, I, they made me feel like my fly was down. Because they were doing like <laughs> the covering the mouth, and then they were also pointing, and they were like, "Look!" And I was like, "It's not any. It's not like the f- the stage is on fire behind me." Uh, right. So what's happening? And I wanted to be like, "What?" But then it's such a weird. I always think when you're opening for a, a headliner, it's weird to like get confrontational. Yeah. <laughs> like it's your show. I did it once or twice with Rogan, but I really try not to. It yeah. was like once or twice, I'm like, dude, I couldn't help it. The guy said, fuck you asshole. I, could, I couldn't help it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I have was, to. Yeah, he would never care, but like, you have to. Yeah, because like, I don't want to ruin it for the next person. So I just barrel through most of she the was, time. She was di- giving me the, like the, <sighs> yeah, like, like how dare what's you. What's this guy saying? I know. And then, because I, I, I was like, oh my God, if you're giving me that, like, I don't know what you're going to be like for you. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. Like I feel like I'm like a ramp up. You would think also they'd be like, "This is not Ari, so fuck everybody who's not Ari." Yeah, yeah. But it was not that at all. No, no, no. I hated them. Yeah. They were throwing me off. I kept looking at them. <sighs> it's bad mojo. I there's a friend of mine years ago, and I always think this is the best analogy. He you says did. it's shit and ice cream. It's a guy, meaning like if you just have like one even tiny speckle of shit and ice cream, like a tub of it, <laughs> it's shit. It, you can't eat it. Uh-uh. So even just like a one little <laughs> moment of like somebody with bad mojo like that, I'm like, you are a little tiny speck of oh shit and ice cream right shit now. Shit and ice cream is such a great term for that. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. The tiniest bit. There's no way I can eat around that tiny shit particle. I was um, steaming a shirt while yeah. I was taking a, a deuce yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Which is, you shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> you're just shit. steaming in <laughs> shit particles into your shirt <laughs> like that's unsanitary I'm yeah. surprised you don't have like pink eye or something <laughs> you're right <laughs> Dude, the steam gets so hot you should do it tonight yeah the steam gets so crazy here yes it does i just cranked it to put and then it's just like oh it felt like a real steam room yeah anyway well i guess this is moot now that you mentioned it but like yeah so i went to stand up to like to like uh, before I wiped to like you know you have to like slap out the the the, the um, wrinkles. Yes. So I took my hand, I cupped it under my butt, and then I stood up to like to make sure I didn't drip any poop. Yeah. But then I like a little bit was on my hand. See, I feel like when you tell me this, it's like you're sharing this as if this is something we all do, and I feel like it's only something that you do. <laughs> you might be as it. It's one of those things that, like, as it comes out of your mouth. Cu- I'm not. Like, <laughs> I'm not like. Steaming my clothes while taking a shit. <laughs> Which is a starting point. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I don't need to consolidate like that in my life to sh- time save. Why am I time? Why am I consolidating? Like, so much? you can do those two separate things unless you're just like completely busy 24 7. Right. Yeah. It's all about being productive, multitasking. Yeah, multitasking. Which I don't think we're made for, clearly. <laughs> You're right. You're yeah. like, and you actually were being supportive again. <laughs> like, okay. And not like, what? You were just like, okay. I, as well, I was first saying, I, was, I enjoy it. Yeah. I like, enjoy this it ride. It seems wrong, but then you were like, no, maybe she's into it too. Yeah, yeah. But no. No. All right, well, then forget all that. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, you cupped your shit. Yeah, I got a tiny touch of it though on my hand. Yeah, I don't think and I've ever like, gotten shit on my hand. What? No. What about from wiping? No. How strong do you? Do you fucking wipe with? Like, I feel like I just have face a clean cut. Not to brag, <laughs> I'm actually really. I only had one incident, and that was because of food poisoning. But I'm actually. This is like one of the weirdly things I'm prideful of is that I don't have major stomach issues. That is good. I think your household has an average of 1.5 major stomach issues. 
<laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I generally think guys have a lot more stomach issues, and I do have a theory about that. Let's hear it. I think because you guys don't maybe express emotion as much, and then you push it down, and it shows up into your stomach and bowels and your gut health. Oh, interesting. So if you guys cried a lot more, then maybe you'd have like better bowel movements. Let me um, see. My I'm not a scientist. No, I know, but we, we all are these <laughs> days. Um, you've read a journal or a headline. No, this is just like something I've deduced. No, on a separate subject of science. That makes you a scientist. Yeah, yeah. Advantage. Let me ask, who's my most effeminate friend? It's not Matteo. He's actually kind of manly. It might be, I'm trying to think, who, maybe it's DeRosa. He probably cries more than anybody I know. Let me ask him what his shits are like. Yeah, ask him. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. It's a good theory. But he also might have an unhealthy lifestyle. Oh, he drinks a lot. He probably, that probably ruins it. Yeah. He only, he's KFC quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. And is he only crying when, I love that we're just like, (laughs) so does Jodorosa, I have to say his full name every time we, (laughs) Yeah. when Jodorosa Jodorosa. cries, uh, is it while he's drinking? (laughs) Um, That's only when I would cry. Right. Oh, back when you were drinking? Yeah. I think he does cry. I've actually never seen him cry when he's drinking. Oh, that's great. But he pretty much only drinks. Okay, then that's bad. I've never seen him not drinking. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if it's specifically related to the drinking when Joe DeRosa cries. Yeah, yeah. But it's, not, it's definitely not unrelated. Okay. Um, well, that brings us to... Uh, yeah, it does kind of. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to do the segue for you because I feel like it's your show. I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm not a good host. Okay. I was lucky. I've been riding coattails since the beginning of this. Oh, that's great because I yeah. feel like that's... Um, acceptance mm-hmm. is really good quality. Yeah. Yeah. You will be on yoga with Ari and friends this month. Yeah. Um, you'll probably be leading that class. Okay, great. Yeah. Sometimes I f- I've been doing a lot of yoga lately and I feel like um, I would love to teach. But I feel like it's pretty hard because you actually have to be one of those like metaphysical kind of people and I'm the, not that way. I'm like, I'm here for the workout. You don't. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You don't. Yoga yeah. with Ari has nothing to do with metaphysicals. Yeah. <laughs> it's just about having a good time and fucking stretching a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Doing the best you can. Okay. Then mm-hmm. I'm game. Yeah. The average yeah. weight, I would say, for uh, my students is probably like 260. Yeah, that's... Men, yeah. women combined. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah, so they're yeah. not they're not hitting a lot of these moves. All right. Neither yeah, because whenever I do yoga, I'm always like, what would I be saying in this moment while we are collectively breathing H A R? Yeah, mention the chakra Zulus and shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what fucking what they would say in Buddhism. Yeah, and I don't even like really fully believe in a lot of that stuff. Find your mind eye. Yeah, I'm like, like what? You want to stop like, hey, I didn't get to remedial class. <laughs> what the fuck's a mind eye? <laughs> well, I don't even know what a mind is. I know. No, I know. I haven't even in like... Um, into like grasp that. Is it possible a mind eye needs LASIK eye surgery? I have no idea. I'm assuming it's in the middle of your forehead. That one. Yeah, like it's, a cyclops. It actually oper- <laughs> operates a place. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Well. Okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I'm not crazy. You ever go on stage and be like, finish a bit and be like, uh, anyway, new subject. Like, I don't have time uh, for the segue. Yeah, that's all I want to do. Also, I, most of the time, I'm like, I can't even remember what I want to do on the next yeah. thing. I love when I haven't done that, and I just started the next thing, and I could tell people, like, wait, are you still talking about the old subject? I'm like, yeah, oh, no, guys, yeah. I'm talking about I ho- moved on. homeownership now. Yeah. yeah for- I know it's weird to do homeownership after that. The dog killing. It has yeah, nothing the- to do with the dog killing. <laughs> that's another thing. I always have to work on my order. <laughs> to like, build I up did, Yeah, I was like, I did that wrong. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Do the weight clean stuff later. Yeah. You're, like, You're like, really, we don't know what we're doing, because there's no... And I hate anybody that tells you that what you need to do. I'm like, no, I don't know. I don't, whatever works for you is not working for me. I think. Nothing's working for me. Yeah. Nothing's so, working. And I'm probably doing something you're doing. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what are we going to do this year? Tolamash. New, so New Year's resolution. Is I'm this where this you. I'm going to call this episode Be Better. Be Better. Do better. Is this where the font comes through? Uh-huh. It can. <laughs> With we, the magical. What, what, imagine it. Marissa yeah, will do it. If you're watching on YouTube. Some on it. Okay. Um, Marissa. Get some font. Get some fucking font, bitch. Um, what am I gonna do? You know what? I've yeah. I've thought about this for New Year's resolutions. Okay. As the years have gone by, I've stopped doing them. Resolutions, yeah. That's my New Year's resolutions. There are some things where I'm like, I'm trying to work on personally, but even when I try to work on it, I realize it's never happening, and I'm like, this is actually just who I am. Right. And you guys are going to have to deal with it, and I'm fine with it. Acceptance is a, is a good resolution. Yeah. Accepting so I guess one's faults as non-faults. I think that's what I'm uh, 
working on is uh, acceptance and then just letting everybody else deal with my bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can form your boundaries around my acceptance. <laughs> I'll do what I want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not Being like I'm breaking it. through, but it's just kind of like, I don't know. I get tired of living under like social constructs. Isn't it great when you finally get to anything where you're like, oh, I don't care about this thing. This thing I'm supposed to care about, I don't. It's so freeing. Yeah. Like going I, to a movie alone. Yeah, yeah. That, I, cause that's where a lot of my like anxiety comes from is yeah. worrying about, uh, is this weird? Is this weird? Yeah. Yeah. Am I, are going to people going to think that I'm like a complete fucking psycho for being like this? Yeah. Yeah. Like, so a lot I'm, of times it's like, all right, I'm going to go do something new. Uh, that I was like, if I eat it or just like fail horrifically, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Like who cares? Right, like none of it matters. You failed before. Right? right. Yeah. I had that when I used to follow at the store. I follow like killers all the time. Yeah. You know, it's like annoying. really great comics. Yeah. yeah. And I would get so nervous after before every one. And I was following Ingram was one of the toughest ones to follow. And Dalia was fucking hard to yeah. follow. And I think it was after Dalia in the main room. I was like, I was getting nervous again. And then I had to tell myself, like, all right, you've been nervous like this a hundred times following him. It always goes pretty well. Yeah, it's And if fine. it doesn't, also who cares? Yeah, nobody, yeah. And it, then it was like, oh yeah. And then I just enjoyed his set and had a fucking good set afterwards. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Where are you at? What? On the New Year's. Well, I like New Year's resolutions. I, I gave up on them for a while, but I also like, it's such a good time marker where it's like, what, I like easy ones. Yeah. Like read two books was is a consistent one. <laughs> I still have that problem. It's, That's hard. I know, but so, some people go read 10 books and I'm like, you're retarded. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Two books is like, let me push myself. So then go one. Yeah, go one. You don't read it all? Um, I go through like really crazy spurts. So I'll read intensely, but I feel like in the last seven years, I haven't really picked up <laughs> I a picture book. this is reading intensely. Well, like I'll... I'll binge. Yeah. If like so, if I have nothing to do for the weekend, I can stay for eight hours in my room just reading straight for eight hours. Really? Yes. Oh. And I enjoy it, and I like that feeling. But then there's that. I, I'm really what I'm doing is just isolating, and then I've enjoyed this escapism for a while. But that's nice. It is nice. Breathing and using your imagination. Yes. I want to be off the phone. I don't know what the number is, but that's like one. two hours a day or less. Honestly, that's a hard number to get if you go screen time. But it still sounds way too much. Two hours a day? Yeah. Of your eight, it should be eight at, eight for you, eight for sleep, eight to do with what I will. Yeah, yeah. And of those eight, a quarter of them are on your phone. What's your screen time report generally? It used to be four or five. That's amazing. Amazingly what? Low. What is yours? I think I pull in you about eight hours a day. No, Sarah, yeah. no. It's bad. That's bad. It's really bad. I left it upstairs because uh, I was taking a break. I take breaks from it. If I'm hanging out with friends, I don't generally try to bring it out that much. Um, as soon as somebody picks up their phone, it makes me want to look at my phone. Cigarette smoking. Same yeah, thing, right? It's really, it's yeah, it's really the that's same. That's how clear an addiction it is. It really is an addiction. It's awful. And I feel like it ruins a lot of, um, sometimes I feel like it puts a rift between Joe and I for that. What do you mean? Well, you're just like, I could be having quality time with him. I could be there yeah. in the moment for him. There's time when your people are on their phone and you're talking to them, they're not listening. I'll try to wait. And I could tell people go like, no, no, don't, don't be an asshole. Like yeah. keep talking, but I'm like, no, you're not listening fully. And it's, I, I've gotten to an acceptance place of other people. Yeah. I'm like, it's okay, but I'm not going to talk to the air. Yeah. I'm not going to talk to somebody a quarter listening. So I'll just wait. But then I do get mad when you're on your phone and somebody comes to you while you're on your phone. You're like, I was actually on this. Right. We're like, give me a minute. I, I get, yeah. Yeah. Or if they jump in, you ever have a serious conversation and somebody comes in? Hey yeah. guys, how you doing? I and you're know. like, not now. Yeah. But you can't say it. So I say, yeah. So it you're just like, gets get weird. Get out. Get out. I started saying it when I, when I realized I walked in on it. I'm like, hey guys, how you? This looks serious. I'll see you guys later. Yeah. <laughs> and they'll have to call me back if it's not. <laughs> yeah. No, it's bad. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, no, the phone is, is really crazy, bad. Lady. That's, but, um, I've had it even worse sometimes when I've done, like when I'm on the road by myself, then it, I can go to like 12. 
Do you do the justifying? We're like, well, so a lot of that's emails at work. No, a, a lot of it's like, it reminds me of how I used to watch TV. What? Just like I used to on. binge watch TV and then now I'm like, like the other, not another day, but when phones came around, I remember being like, wow, I don't even really watch that much TV anymore. Like, and then it dawned on me like, oh, I've just like <laughs> transferred it over <laughs> to a smaller screen. It's like, I barely eat pizza now that I moved to Austin barbecue. Earlier. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like it was such an, I'm like, this is exactly what I'm doing. I used to watch MTV like yeah. insane when I was a kid. Cause there's just always something on. And I feel like TikTok is the same way that I would it's watch. Such a, I was talking to my sister about um, Survivor. She just started watching Survivor with her kids. Yeah. Um, and she's like, you know, there's like 31 seasons. I was like, how's that possible? It started, and she goes, they have multiple 98 a year. 98 or 98. something. But they do more than one a year. Yeah. Mm. I don't understand how that show is still around. So I watched, I missed season one. Yeah. I've already talked about it. It was already in comedy or something. I was like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. Yeah. And then I was like, let me see season two. It's a big cultural thing. Couldn't stop watching. Could not watch a single episode. Okay. Hanging on by the seat of my pants for, for eight minutes of plot development and 50 minutes of fucking nothing. And then season three came out. I was like, no way will I watch that first episode because I won't not watch. That's how TikTok is. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not getting on there. Oh, yeah. Remember watching like real world, re, uh, real world marathon? Yeah. And so you'd be like, let me just watch one episode. And then you wouldn't even realize that you had started the second episode because they did it so seamlessly. And then you're like, well, now I've I got to finish started. the second one. Uh -huh. I, there are times in my early 20s where it would be months. I was like, I was supposed to go look for a job. And I just never got You're watching the real world. <laughs> just living watching in the your real fake world. world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was just watching real world marathons. Damn, that's cr that's a crazy high amount of fucking. It is. Time. Here's the good thing, like the the part that it's like, well, you're bored, right? So let's say you're with Joe. Yeah. Your husband. Like when and we're like, on a trip. Yeah, and yeah. like you're bored for a second, or like he goes to the bathroom, so you pull it out. He comes back, and then instead of saying like, "Oh, I just thought of something while I was peeing," or or vice versa, or if him, you know you doing it. You see somebody not there, so you're like, okay, and then you just forget that. That yeah. boredom would make you go like, um, oh, those shoes have fur on them, huh? Like something to get a conversation yeah, yeah. going. Yeah, I just... I'm it, bad at it. At starting conversations? No, at putting my phone away. Yeah, no, it's... um. It is really... I, and they get you, and you know, we've seen all... Like, most people have seen all the docs these days like they know what they're doing they know what they're doing yeah they don't care they want you to waste your life well like tiktok is i think their algorithm is probably one of the smartest algorithms i've ever witnessed and well, out again, of all the tell, social media this, like, i don't get it what is it they i swear they know everything about you there are some videos that show up and i'm like are you reading my diary right now like there is do you know that pop star sean mendes it's weird that i said First said name. pop star but like <laughs> so he's uh he's huge he was in like uh i want to say like a vogue video interview vogue magazine and they had asked him if he, they could see his for you page on tiktok and he would it yeah it's called a for you page meaning like this is the stuff content that we know you're going to like oh and so what did he say he said no smart but there's a lot of speculation that he's gay oh. that if he showed us for you page that uh, we would know exactly what his sexual preferences are that might be that i could see that yeah i could see that i don't know but I'm, i can see that people, or one of those things it, let's say i was a massive star with a fake personality for the world yes i wouldn't want somebody to know lots of stuff i, I watch fucking bombs going i watch people in hong kong getting shot at protests like, I, know. I don't want <laughs> no. i don't want people knowing that if like, i'm this goody two shoes disney guy i know what you're searching you're like it's your deepest it is exactly what you're asking about your Yourself first mm -hmm. when you are Googling. It's also, your Also, you mind. would have to know it more. You'd have to be like, was I high when I Googled this? Was I lonely when I Googled yeah. this? Was I, you know, I mean, so many things. What conversation did I just have when I was Googling this? Yes. Like, it's not just my normal. Yeah. No, it's, it's what, like, whenever they're like true crime, they always go to their search history. As if that'll like show. Yeah, because like, I think the one, I forgot. The name of it was really recent. It was out in Utah, the guy that murdered his wife and then his two kids. Yeah. 
I think the mistress that he was having an affair with that like prompted all of this, she had searched, she said she had no part of it, but she had searched how much money did uh, the mistress in the Casey Peterson trial make from her book? Wow. That you're like I bef- bef- diabolical. Before she was killed? Uh, no, after. After. Wow. And then I think there was one other one she searched of like something about anal and you're like, that's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, why is this coming out? I love when they reveal stuff that has nothing to do with it. Like remember when Bill Clinton, they were like, uh, they were like investigating for the Whitewater. I don't know what the Whitewater scandal was, but during that, they're like, you fucked Monica Lewinsky? And he's like, this has nothing to do with my embezzling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> why is this coming up? <laughs> and then they got him on lying about that. It's like, you're doing this in front of my wife. I know. I can't. Do the idea of like dying and then people going to my phone wow. is mortifying. Hotmail but- had a big thing when they were like, we need to get into this dead kid's dead like 25 year old's account so yeah. we can like return these emails for him. And they were like, no. Yeah. And they didn't know what it was he was hiding, but it's like, it's his stuff. But the parents like, please let us have it so we can get in there and try to figure this out or whatever. And they're like, can't do that. Oh, it's a huge ethical dilemma right now. I know Apple won't let people get the numb locker, the yeah. face thing. Um, even for like, cause I know there was like a mass murder situation and they wanted to get in the phone and they were like, can't press we it can't. Yeah, yeah. It's like privacy. I'll just go on the record. You guys can get into my phone if you want. If my parents are dead, yes. then absolutely go for it. If the one is still alive, even in a vegetative state, absolutely not. I'm, I mean, these are things I'm sure some people will come in the comments and be like, actually, that's not true. But I feel like I remember that being these were like weird ethical dilemmas that under the Constitution. But you may be able to get through maybe like a warrant. Or something. Warren and a dead guy. It seems unfair too, because he's like, well, "Can I fight this? Can I appeal it?" Or, yeah, yeah. You know, like we don't want, we don't know what he wanted. Well, that's what I think. Um, Yang was fighting for our Who, Yang? owner. Yin uh, Yang. Yeah. No, the one that <laughs> was for Yang? Andrew Yang. I was okay. trying to remember his name. Dude, if there was a Yin Yang uh, candidate, yeah, he would get my vote. Totally. God, the fucking graphics for Yin Yang. Yeah, great. yeah. Uh, picture just like a black and white. Yeah, it's cheese balls. I remember being. Those are like the worst the tattoos yang. ever. I was so into it in like <laughs> high school. I thought it was so cool because you could draw a circle, a little swoosh, and a yeah, little swoosh. Yeah. Dot dot. I just remember oh. being like, that is the most basic. Anytime so I saw basic. somebody had it or like on a mural, I'm like, this is so basic. The yin yang. Where does the yeah. yin yang come from? That's for that is for the outroduction. I isn't that kind of like a Buddhism in a weird something thing? like that? Like the when there's light, there's dark. You got to have the good and the bad. Maybe. You take the good, you take the bad. <laughs> you take them both. And there you have. That's Those are the facts of life. <laughs> the facts of life. <laughs> the facts of life. <laughs> um, I would like, another resolution I would like to make, what about, I would like to master a martial art. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Wouldn't, yeah. It, wouldn't it be cool? Uh, yeah, I would feel like having that in your arsenal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, would be like a cool skill to have, but you'd have to wait for somebody to confront you to like impress. That would be the dream though. Yeah, yeah. Where you were like, like that movie History of Violence where we had no idea that you were uh, like this assassin killer. And then it comes out. Yeah. It's always that in the movies where it's like just a normal family man, whatever, then something bad happens and he's like, turns and he goes to like and the back of his closet and he taps the wall and yeah. then the, the gun rack opens yeah. and I'm like well, you had that for years <laughs> you just hid that before and your you even kids had a kid? didn't find that <laughs> just in case you yeah. came back that's wild yeah you think you'd fully retire and use that yeah. for the farm that money or like when he gets into like a minor scuff as you do when you're married and then he does like a badass move and the wife is like whoa yeah she's like Ooh, that's mm, that odd. was interesting. For someone in accounting, yeah, it's <laughs> an odd skill to have. <laughs> um, I would. Uh, there's a story of Boss Rutten. He's this old. Who's that? He's an MMA guy. Okay. He was in Pride, like the kind of a pre UFC thing, and um, just a bald. Like I don't know. He's probably like five eight, five nine. Not big. He yeah. Probably fought at like one seventy, one eighty five. Anyway, he's at a Vegas nightclub, and um, I forget who it is. A Miami Dolphin was there, and. Boss stepped on his foot by accident. He's walking out, and and all those guys are killers, but they're all very—I mean, almost all—very calm and respectful because they know. Yeah. It's like guys that get laid a lot. They're just, they just—what do they call it? Big dick energy. I guess like so. They don't, I don't have know. to be like pushy or anything, you know. <laughs> yeah, they just like, know it'll come. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
So he he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. And he goes, yeah, watch it, man. He goes, sure, I'm, I'm really sorry. And he goes, yeah, you, you should be sorry. He goes, all right. Boss is like, all right, sure. And the guy just kept pushing on this Miami Dolphin, just kept pushing at him. And he was like, fuck, why? he's probably drunk. And he's like, all right, man, I'm sorry. We're gonna, he's like, you want to go outside? And Boss was just like, what? Yeah, <laughs> what? you have no idea. And the guy's like, to fucking handle this outside. And he goes, all right. And then as he's going out, he just sees the guy, the dolphin, just sees a bunch of people going, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, that's what you want. Yeah. 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 So I'm like, you don't want to mess with. Master martial arts, that's a good one. Yeah. What about, what about you on that level? What do you got? Um, I... Always, I wish. Karate would man one too. I would love to be able to sing like amazing, where people are like, "Oh my god!" What? Like they fucking cream in their pants. Mm-hmm. Um, I told a friend one time, I said I would sell my soul to the devil if I could sing really well. He was religious. He got really mad at me for saying that, which I thought was absolutely ridiculous. He was like, like "Why?" I'm like, "You know that there's no place that I can go to to do this." You know, there's no like, pawn shop, a soul pawn shop. I know. I'm like, it's just like a, an exaggeration of speaking. Like, and I would sell. I would still sell my physical soul to the devil. I my loophole would be that I would use it for good, like sing what? for like charity, for Jesus, raise money, to hopefully get a second soul out of it. Yeah, yes. <laughs> hey Jesus. It would make Jesus. It would make the devil so yeah. mad. Like, ah. But like, don't you feel like having like an amazing voice would be so badass. Do you ever people see that, love it. People love it. Do you ever see that Jewel video where no. she dresses up like an ugly? Okay. No, I haven't seen I it. Loved, but was, does she really have an amazing voice? Well, I don't know. It's a good question. I don't know. She just, right, I don't know. I think She's kind she of a has folk like singer. a voice that works for her. Yeah. But it's, you know, like. It's not like, whoa. Yeah. You're hitting these notes of like, it's not Christina Aguilera. Yeah. Right. Huh. Good point. I want like. I'm talking like Celine Dion, Whitney Houston level of singing where people are just like, I cannot believe it. You ever go to karaoke and see one and you're like, whoa. Yeah. I mean, it's my, one of my favorite things to watch online is like the, now not so much because I just feel like it's, they know what they are, but like the uh, Britain's Got Talent and mm-hmm. X Factor well, and America's. Yeah. Like the, the Susan, Susan Boyle. Susan um, Boyle. And people are like, how can an ugly... Sing I know well. it's so. It makes no sense. <laughs> it's she's overcoming her gross face to use her vocal cords. Yeah, I, it doesn't make any sense to anyone. What is this? Yeah, people are crying like, oh, she's so ugly, but she can sing. I well. know. How does this How happen? Did she do it? Yeah. <laughs> How did she slip through the cracks like this? Like, uh, there's the I love the Paul Potts one. He was the original. Paul Pot. Oh, Paul Potts. There's a guy singer named Paul Potts. Yes, he's from England. Do you he know who Paul like, Potts is, right? No, who's that? He was the Cambodian, the Khmer Rouge leader who killed probably a million Cambodians. Mm. Paul Potts. His name is Paul Potts. Yeah, it wasn't that guy. Wow, <laughs> wow. What <laughs> We'd a crazy... love it if they were like, "This next guy coming up to sing is the Cambodian, <laughs> <laughs> the leader of the Khmer Rouge. He would beat babies' skulls against a tree <laughs> to save bullets." I, that would be oh I would love watching America I've always thought they should do America's Got Talent in prison because there's an ethical dilemma that I always think we always have of like uh, we don't let uh, we don't like it our celebrities out of prison having talent that right. do atrocious things but I feel like America turns when they see a prisoner doing well doing having an amazing talent that I'm like I bet you there's an untapped resource of talent in prisons that could be a show hello they'll never tour. At least... they'll never tour no but <sighs> I, I mean why not what else deal. are they doing in there what if they can make a deal like prisons you get half the thing you get to transfer us all on a tour of prisons yeah we'll or... be on one of those buses with the cages going from prison to prison you get half my family gets half yeah and i and no they get 49% family gets 49% I get 2% in cigarettes <laughs> yeah, like, first I love that as a bargaining chip for this TV show that yeah. we're we're producing <laughs> come why at us I mean, come at us with an offer why don't this is the kind of content I would live for mm-hmm. like the the reward system of you, the reward system that you just created can the theme song for it be 18 and life to yeah. go skid row skid row yeah yeah um, cause there's, 
I mean, don't remember watching there's like those, I don't know, like Malaysian prisons where they all get together and do thriller. And you're like, this is pretty oh, yeah. fucking great. Yeah. How much <laughs> yard time are they getting? Where, why are there not rocks to crack? I know. What is it? I'm like, if that's what you're doing, like, I this sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to just go to theater camp in prison. Yeah. Theater camp. Oh, my God. You know there would be. Remember that homeless guy who could sing with the voice of a, a golden voice, whatever? Yeah, there was that. There was a homeless In guy Cleveland? that was known for doing the like uh, movie trailer voiceover. Oh, really? Yeah, it was like a few, maybe ten years ago. He wow. was down and out. Yeah, people would be totally down, but then you would be like, "Well, Cosby can tour." You know, if let's say he goes back, yeah. and you're like, no, 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 they have to be, uh, they have to make it in prison, you have not to, before. Yeah, you have to be in prison. What do you think if Cosby wanted to do stand up at the prison? Let's say he was still in prison. This is all moot now, but like, he was in prison. He wanted to do stand up at the prison talent show. Should that be allowed? Or do I, we want him I gone, would gone? think so. I mean, like, if we're playing prison rules and prison everybody rules. gets to go up as long as it's in prison, yeah, and it's part of the entertainment. You ever get the shrink in the, in the good? Yeah. In the, <laughs> ain't the blood's coming out I mean, of the warden and turns the other cheek <laughs> out of the way? You know he's on the take. <laughs> they do serve jello in prison. They do? Yeah. He must get so bored, annoyed by that. He must yeah. have been like, everyone's like, get the jello. And he's like, all right, uh, God, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was funny the first time. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the first place I've been transferred to. I can't believe he hasn't died. That, you like, remember Joe Paterno, as soon as all of that Gone. Hit. He yeah. just died. Took a turn for the <laughs> worst. Died. They fired him, and he died in no time. But like Bill Cosby is like Joe Paterno seemed like a un- unfortunate one to me because like he wasn't ever accused of doing anything. He was just accused of handling it uncomfortably. Yeah, not in the best way. He's like, hey, your friend might be a pedophile. He goes, ah. He's like, I ah, may have ah, suspected, but you never know, ah. so I didn't want to throw that out it's there. Like, well, I don't want to yeah. go into bits, but like, yeah, yeah, it's but the, but it's yeah, you can't, you. Can't, yeah, I'm not going to go into bed. You can't be <laughs> friends with your friend if you're like, hey, are you fucking kids? And they're like, no. And you're like, oh, okay. I heard somebody say Let's something. Go hang. One of the like angry friends we have um, was talking about how like men will always defend their friends in the comedy world if they're accused of something terrible. Mm. And I was like, yeah, it's just like you defend your friend if they're accused of like stealing jokes. Like You don't want to believe the worst in your friends. Yeah. You, so you want to be like, no, not my friend. Yes. Well... There's a whole study. There's like Malcolm Gladwell's book, Talking to Strangers, which I did read recently. Boom, one. One book. Uh, maybe I'll he read that. Talks about, Is it good? It was good. I love those kind of books. Those are the kind of things I like reading. Mm-hmm. Um, he just talked about, we do... The reason why all these things fall through the crack like that is most people run under the assumption, and it's nice, that, that people are good. Yeah. And most people are. And it's are. really hard to believe that people do bad things. Nowadays, it's gone the opposite, where it's hard to believe someone would be innocent. Yeah, it's weird when you meet a genuinely nice person. It's almost off-putting, because you feel like, yeah. wait a minute. No, I do think, though, that people are 99% good. I think intentions are good, And we're just looking good, yeah. at everybody going like, well, what you, you've done something wrong. I know, but there's, so, there's like a lot of diabolical shit. But I also think people get desperate. What do you mean? I just think in anything that we deal, even in our uh, business, some of the stuff that I would find unethical and not maybe against law or anything, mm-hmm. I'd be like, oh, that was kind of dirty. Kind of like throwing another comic under the bus in front of a booker is something I don't yeah, really like, care for. That's not illegal, but dude, I don't want you around. Yeah, I yeah, just exactly. feel like that's, that's bad a great mojo. Example. That's a great example. Yeah. Totally not illegal. No one would say you should be in jail for it, but so what? It's dirty. It's, still, it's dirty. But it just comes from like a moment of I think desperation to get into the top spot. It's 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 like the be like water where you yeah. like understand a little bit, but still it's like let me understand, but also like let me pull you aside and say, hey, dude, you can't ever do that again. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. Like let me try to be compassionate here, but like I need to tell you that's really wrong. Yes. So I'm forgiving you, but like don't ever do that, or it's yeah. habitual. Well, I'm just like, ah, not a good look. Not a good look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not what we're doing. <laughs> I just like stay classy. I try to stay classy. Yeah. I would like to do a special this year. That's a realistic one. Yeah. Put me down for that one. <laughs> special X2. In the next, like, uh, let's say 18 months. So, like, year to. Start planning a special then? Start planning do a month. Plan yeah. Slash well, plan. like, I think I'm at 40 minutes, but I want to get rid of the first 15 because it's COVID 15. Can I give you some advice? <sighs> sure. 
Um, I generally hate advice because I feel like it's going to hurt my feelings. Um, this is general advice I give to everybody. Okay. Rank your bits um, in order of how good they are. Okay. You're, so that you have 10 bits. I know you have more or less, whatever. Yeah. But because you have 10 bits, number 8, 9, 10, try to write some other bits to get those 8, 9, 10 out. Yeah. So that those will become B-sides and like your overall material Yeah, a little be extra. Yeah. It's not per, it wasn't personal advice. No, no. I thought you were like, can you not talk like that on stage? <laughs> Your hair, what do we got? <laughs> Options. You need to lose 10 pounds. <laughs> 30 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that was classic. <laughs> I, I don't, nah, I'm not going to defend myself. Um, what else have we got? What should we, how can we be better this year? I do like New Year's because it's such a clear, like, by the end of the year, it's January 1st or December 1st. You're like, did I get to that thing yet? It's so easy to keep track of. Yes. And also, like, we're and in the cold time. months, so there's time to kind of, like, gear up for it. Uh-huh. And, and at the <laughs> end, like, it, there's time to it like, out. get it done by yeah. the end. Like, in November, December, it's like, oh, shit, I didn't do it, but luckily nothing's going on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What could I do? Well, two new countries. I want to do two new countries again. That's a good one. I've always wanted to write my own um, book, Bam. even though I don't read. But it was going to be like a pretty easy book. Write a book. And then write well, a movie. Uh, based on the book? No. Separate. Separate. Based on a sketch. Oh. Or any sketch that I've done. A movie. Okay. Shoot that movie or just write it? I would shoot it. Or at least I would shoot 15 minutes of it to get into a film festival. I think you can... I don't have the money or resources to do a full movie. I'm so sorry. No um, worries. Yeah, that would be tough. Yeah. You ever see an episode, just one episode of 24? Yeah. And it's like, I remember when I was watching this, but really it would go with any like hour-long like drama and go, how does anyone ever write a movie or it, everything works out, the proper like act structure, and it's like, this seems impossible. I've tried to been doing the general outline for almost two years now, and I scratch it when I get to the arc. <laughs> I always say, arc, yeah. yeah, I always say I hit a <laughs> skill plateau, and that is the area of my skill plateau. I yeah. go, I'm good with character, like setting up character, doing the juxtaposition of it, and then once I like getting the important part to push the story forward and then you have to have where you think they've made the resolve and then that's not the resolve that they thought they wanted. <laughs> that's a good one. It's so fucking <laughs> hard. One. And then I try to, and then I say, uh, why don't you try to write the worst movie? Cause that's a better mindset and try to and you can and, get there. Yeah. And I think even, but even there I still hit a fucking a wall. wall. I was going to put in here, write a Pulitzer Prize winning book and write a, award winning movie but I, now I like how about write a terrible movie write a terrible movie okay. also my book was going to be self published the I, there's no way of getting this publishing companies fuck you over and it's like anything now is like my buddy who's a writer said that when yeah. I was like and I still got to get back to it it's two years in a row I, I haven't written my oh I did write my first two chapters last year but um, um, he's like yeah there's no self published if you have a fan base or a way to promote it there's no I, Barely anybody reads in real books anyway. Yeah. Um, people, uh, I know my mom always goes for the cheap stuff when she's like on her Kindle trying to, yeah. she reads a shit ton. So she goes to the self um, published. Oh, and right. then nowadays, if you do, like Twilight was self published, but it got so much traction they were that like, it will help you with yeah, it. Yeah. They, yeah. If Penguin takes fucking 85% of it, you're like for what? Yeah. Yeah. And they, a lot of the times they don't even push it as much as you would probably I push think it. The New York Times bestseller list is kind of like the iTunes um, best, best, albums list where it's like you're number one like I sold 400 records yeah and I got it spiked in the first day because you're mm -hmm. like how is Snooki from Jersey Shore on the New York Times bestseller yeah so yeah, yeah. some of those are just scams uh, she's award winning yeah she's a Pulitzer Prize <laughs> I remember when uh, Chelsea Peretti <laughs> yeah had the number one podcast on comedy iTunes and she had released zero episodes that's so because you have to gain uh, you output. get everyone to be like right away to do it yeah. yeah I've seen there's a few TikTok people that managed to pull really a lot of numbers in the first and get a top podca podcast yeah. because of it I will tease now that I will have a new podcast coming and I'll announce it before it's out so we can all get tons of comments yeah <laughs> and just like hella push it yeah you gotta get everyone 
to get to it first before it even. And so that means the very first one, all these people will subscribe. So yeah. then it's like, you're listening to podcast episodes or yeah. monumental. Oh, yeah. Well, it's like for, yeah, as you said, for even comedy albums, we can, whenever, anytime a comic's like, I made it to number one, I'm like, yeah, yeah, we yeah. all do. Yeah. And then you see. For two, like four hours. And four then Jim hours. Gaffigan Jim is Gaffigan, back Gaffigan, right back. And you're yeah. like, who's, who's two through ten? It's like six of those are Gaffigan. <laughs> yes, and They're then always, it's Berbiglia. <laughs> yeah, Berbiglia Gaffigan. Yeah. yeah. You're like, fuck those guys. <laughs> Gaffigan must make so much money in just like SoundCloud shit. I know. It's amazing. He's always up there. You yeah. only look when one of your friends is number one. Then you look scaled down. It's all Gaffigan. They love that picture though. I'm like, look at me, number one. It yeah. does feel good. But. It does. And uh, no one at home knows, knows that. Exactly. They so you're, think you're the shit. Your friends at and home. And that's all that matters. Like, you're in a commercial? Are you a movie star? Yeah. <laughs> like, no. You have a number one yeah, yeah. comedy album? How much did you sell? A billion? 286. You have no idea. Yeah. I'm broke. Yeah. Like, I still owe. <laughs> I'm out money on this $200 money. recording. It's like when people think when you do a late night show that they're like, why are you talking about being broke? You're like, you it don't even makes, make money from this. It doesn't make sense to them. Yeah. 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 Somebody just got offered to do like Corden or something. And they're yeah. like, we can't fly out. And he was like, and he's doing way better now. I don't want to out him, but I'll tell you in a second. But like, um, that's Patreon stuff. Uh, yeah, I always say we'll give you. I'll tell you my secrets on Patreon. Um, yeah, but it was like, oh. uh, yeah, and he's like, no, I won't get anything out of it. And you can make me fly myself. You I, get I'll a just sweet put up my tape. own thing. Yeah, I make my own tapes now. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's so those late nights are. It feels good, and it's still like something I like to do, but it doesn't. I had to. I still had to work my day job after both. Wow. Yeah. I call that. I always considered that was it my walk sense. of shame is doing <laughs> a late night and then walking to your day job the next day. We were at Cap City, me and Rogan, a long time ago. God. Yeah. And and one of the waiters was like, "Hey, can I take five minutes off? I'm about to be on Premium Blend." And he was working, <laughs> serving fucking people. Oh, is that Daniel Jackson? Show. Maybe. Big, I know big who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I was like, "This is not what I was promised." <laughs> I know. Such and a, I'm like, like I can't get pull. on that and you're serving me? Yeah. Uh, show business is wild. It sucks. What do we got to get another, some, a couple of more? Well, we really I have do? a really small one. Pegging for Joe. Okay. Pegging for Joe. No. Okay. Um, whenever I edit my podcast, I to check in with my guests so they know that I'm listening, I say yeah a lot and I'm like, that has got to go. Say yes less. Say oh, yeah. yes less. <laughs> yes. Um, but it's hard because you don't want to be like this. I see sometimes podcasts and I see uh, 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 hosts that get it way more. Sickler's really good at it where he's like, you're on a good story. Why do I have to interrupt you? Or even jump in and go, oh, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. And it's like, shut up. Mm -hmm. Because now that I've listened to a few, <laughs> now you're doing it. <laughs> now that I've listened to a few, mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, let the one guy talk it out. Elliot, you know what I mean? Dork. Like, <laughs> it sounds I have to say, weird. yeah. Now, you have to. But I've had, whenever I'm editing, I see like that, yeah, spike in uh -huh. the sound waves okay. every uh -huh. like few bars. I'm like, this has to go. And also, I get people that. Because you have a mic in front of you, too. Comment to it. Like, if Louis, somebody's telling you about their fucking dead mom, you're not going to be like, right, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're just going to like listen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's so hard. I mean, I'm, I can't break it because I want you to know that I'm there for you. Uh -huh. And just being like silent and just a death stare feels like I'm zoning out for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys are going to have to accept that. Just right. Just deal with it. That's, that's your, your that's problem. That's your resolutions. Yeah. Accept our flaws. We didn't ever intend to go into hosting a fucking radio show. Yes. So we're doing the best we can. Quit fucking critiquing <laughs> us. But this is not our skill set. I, I don't know anything about technology. I'd have a fat alcoholic walk me through this. Yeah, this is hard. And everyone's like, your sound is off. And I'm like, it's fine. It's fine. It's good enough. <laughs> Thank you. Let it go. Oh, yeah. Fuck off. I just had a, a episode with uh, Joe List air, and then I like looked down when it was starting, and his mic was at like one. It should be like five and a half. Yeah. And so thirty seconds, and then I'm like, and then I like turned it up, and be like, oh, well, instead of doing this, why don't you fucking get your <laughs> mic out right? I'm like, shut it up. You can still hear what he's saying. They're so atro. I mean, grateful for anyone that listens, but like the. Uh, level that you have you hold us at is too high. We are morons. Yes. We didn't 
listen in school. That's why we're here. <laughs> huh? Are you nuts? Yeah. What are you expecting of us? <laughs> Great. I'll just go technology heavy and then I'll just sit there and be bored and fucking asleep. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Go find. Go fucking listen to the Law and Order podcast. <laughs> Get off my back. Get off my back. Yeah. So acceptance. That's like the listeners, you guys have to accept our faults a little bit better. Yeah. Okay. That's a good way to go. What (laughs) else should we, what else should we like of the comedy audience? Yeah. Rely on them. Um, What should, what should their resolutions be? Here's something that I get annoyed online. Um, Mm -hmm. I think it's sweet what some of them do, but I'll get, um, I did these like I was making fun of those Glossier ads. I think they like that makeup company looks like shit. So I did a few like making fun of it and I managed to copy it down to the T. Nice. And then when any other comic or female comic does a makeup tutorial, somebody would be like, Sarah already did this. And it's not just me. I've seen this all over like uh-huh. the joke. Like they're so like and you're joke on the winning thievery. Side of that. Yeah, you I'm, want no part of it. I want no part of it. And also, I don't own the realm of makeup tutorials and making fun of it. This was just one small sector that it was like a little nuance that I chose. Yeah. Just because that person's doing a makeup tutorial does not mean it's the same it's thing. Yeah. yeah. It's not the same thing. It's, that, it's not mine. Yeah. That I... Sometimes you'll have somebody be like, so, oh, um, blah, 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 did that joke. And then you go listen to it and you're like... Ah. Really? Yeah. I feel like we're talking about the same subject matter, but our point of view on it is different. And then the direction that we take it is different. So the whole like joke thievery community needs to kind of a little bit chill out. Also, everything has been done. Everything's been done. Every, I mean, I'm not talking like straight up hacking someone's bits because that yeah. does ha- But chords. I don't really think it happens that much. It, here's the problem. The, the high level people point something out feminists or or high level uh, comedians or, yeah. or whatever it is they point out something Fe- I'm, I'm talking about feminist academics and then the enforcers not intentionally are these grunts who barely understand the argument yes and so they're going I was like that's stealing a joke gotta drop it and it's like get, shut, get out of here <laughs> you don't even understand this issue yeah or they'll go like Blackface got completely shifted from like that 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 fucking yeah. yada 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 thing to like dressing as a black person. That wasn't it. Yeah. And then they just like that's black uh, close enough or or any sort of word choice. So like, ah, uh, it's just so bad. It's like you guys are dumb and you're just changing the the game. Yeah, it's it's too much of uh, policing of air, that. Air, oh, that's airplane humor, and it's like yeah. no, this is a guy whose plane almost went down with a plane full of retarded kids. Yeah, this is not this is not <laughs> airplane humor. You guys it don't just get happened it. Happened to take place uh, in an airplane. Yeah. Also, I see people like get hardcore on comics on stuff and then let their person that they adore get away, get away. with it. The, the same the kind ones. of material that I'm like, uh-huh. there's. These people are sycophants. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Adrian got accused of taking a Bobby Lee joke. Crazy. Yeah, and she's like, I don't think I've ever seen him have a stand-up much. clip he online. Doesn't, he doesn't record yeah. much. Absolutely not. Doesn't record much. But they were like, you stole that from Bobby Lee. He did it first. Um, you need to apologize and drop that and pay your you know, pay your dues or pay your fucking penance, whatever. And then she goes, I did this on the David Letterman show, a guy who's not on the air anymore. Bobby did this on a podcast two years ago. So just so you know, the timetable is very clear. And they go, oh, all right. And then she wanted to, but doesn't go, no, not all right. You said I did it second, so I should have to be punished. Why don't you go to your guy that you love and say you did it second? Yes. Now you have to apologize. Yeah. It's, it's, oh, yeah, Re- it's sick yeah, of fans. Yeah, they retract that statement because when that happens it, hurts, it makes me feel accused. really bad as if I've done something horrible I'll, when I'm on like a quote unquote the winning side I'll have to reach out to that person like hey I don't know if you saw that I, but want just you so know, you know, I, I, I don't think that at all yeah I don't give a shit yeah. also nowadays I think in the past I'd be like oh I kind of do that bit I don't even care. I'm just like, hey, let's just be aware if we're on, if you are on the lineup before me and I watch your set, I'll know and I'll be like, all right, I won't do that. Yeah, it's a pop culture reference. I mean, I don't like that that happens, but it doesn't make me feel great as a comic to know that I'm doing similar material to another comic, but it happens a lot. It's another thing where it's like you look at the worst in people or the best in people. I think 99% of the time it's like, I was also uh, had that same situation happen. I wasn't yeah. watching, like most of the time I wasn't watching your stuff. Yeah. It's just like you're talking about general things. General That's right. yeah. COVID. So many people have the same jokes. I know. It's a it massive is. thing. It's true. We all went through it and we all went through it. Yeah. 
And that's why I'm trying to fade those ones out. Yeah. Yeah. Nick Yusuf said from the start, this is really smart. I will not do a COVID joke. Because it's I hacky can, from the start. It is hacky from the start, but you can get away with like, I can, some of them fall into the line of like, de, like being depressed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I can scoot them over. Yeah. Yeah. What else would we expect of the audience? How about uh, when you don't find a joke funny, um, there is no line. It's just you don't find it funny. Yeah, just like move on. Just move on. I've got, yeah, I have a few of those right now of like, I guess I'm the only one that doesn't get the joke. I'm like, yeah, and you also didn't yeah. have to stay here. Yeah, you're right. You didn't get yeah. the joke. Okay, <laughs> okay. you're admitting fun. you're a dork, but that's yeah. fine. Thank you for admitting that. <laughs> but your sarcasm is coming through regardless. I, I was defending Chappelle's thing on um, some podcast. Yeah. And I hadn't seen it yet. Um, and somebody, some comment was like, how can you defend this if you haven't seen it? And it's like, because I believe comedy's an art form. It's just like the artist should do what he wants. I don't yeah, have I to see it specifically. If you have to see it specifically, then you're saying there are lines that can be crossed. Let me decide if it is one or not. Yeah. My stance is there's no lines. Yeah, it's, it's just up to jokes. him to present what he wants to present. Yeah, it's a comedy special. Yeah, yeah. I, I keep going back to like I wasn't stoked when Arcade Fire went to like Island Sounds. Yeah, but it's up to them. Yeah, it's not up to me. You're like I'll just sit this one out. And yeah. maybe hopefully they'll come back to <laughs> yeah. what I like. Yeah, exactly. It's not. You know. I don't. That's the thing. It feels like. Now, I, I don't know. I don't want to go into a territory that uh, we get bitter about it. But you're just like, Good. the feeling of owing people stuff really uh, bums me out. Owing people? What do you mean? Like an emo- like pulling in a emotion from me. Like, uh, huh. uh, why did you do this? And you're like, well, I not, I'm not making it for you. Yeah, like, I <laughs> just create it because I like it. Right, and then I hope you me. like I'm it. I'm making it for yeah. me. It'd be nice if you liked it, but yeah. not every one of my jokes is for everyone. Yeah, exactly. Well, and somebody's like, well, I don't like, let's say the troll stuff. I'm like, okay, we should stop doing it. It's like, I won't. Yeah. And it's like someone else like, I don't like the cutesy stuff you do. I'm like, okay. That's fine. But, but like, why sure. can't you have, I like both. Uh, yeah, yeah. Most people like both. Most it's, people like it's everything. It's the yin and the yang. The cutesy with the troll. Yeah. Or I, you'll ever finish a, uh, a set and somebody will come up to you and be like, why don't you talk about something in the news I'm like oh, because I, I don't have any bits about it yeah or or I just don't I don't care about that I'm like oh you should have yeah it's not something I've like thought about recently yeah. yeah it's not on my mindset yeah there's that one and we're not here for you anyway yeah but please come to the show please come to the shows <laughs> enjoy yourself and then it's like laugh or don't um yeah yeah I wish there was a way to well whatever but uh, well I have ha- now I, when I go out now and do sh- sets I, I started doing like my mantra for the night of like, you're going in, you're doing your set, you're sticking to your set list that you created no matter what. If you eat, if a joke eats it, you don't change it. You go on to what you wanted to do that night. If somebody uh, does something distracting or is kind of rude, like just barrel through it. Really? Well, mo- mainly like I just kept on getting into this trap of like being like, what What are you guys doing over there? And then it would just be like this weird <laughs> Taking it personally, Stand and they're still. like, uh, we're having an inner fight between yeah, the social like, circle. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, like oh, your joke kind of reminded us about something that was going on, and then you're like, yeah, but you are really being distracting, and then I'm like, I probably could have just like brushed over that and for a else moment. Is, like, is, she a, is she having a meltdown? I know, it's kind of like when a teacher reprimands you, where you're like, God, like, what do we do? So I was having those moments, especially like late night shows, where I'm like, I'm here to do a job. I can, can, I'll be like, I'm the cleaner. I'm going in. I'm doing my set. I'm not here for you guys. <laughs> and I'm out. <laughs> this reminds me. We had a teacher. Like a, she took over somebody. Somebody got like cancer or something. So she took over halfway through, but she was a permanent, mm-hmm. but permanent sub. Yeah. So no respect. And uh, we were in the back waiting for her to show up once. And we we're in the back. You know the little window sill for um, chalk? Mm-hmm. Um, so we were in the back trying to like launch it and land it on the sill. Just kids. Fun. Yeah. She wasn't there. So we're waiting. So we're like launching them, launching them, you know, trying to get on. She comes in five minutes late and um, six of us. And she was like, <laughs> she was like, Shafir, Yoni, out. Like, because we're, we're like, what? Like, you just tell us to stop and sit down. Yeah. This wasn't a kick out of both fence. And I'm just now realizing she had probably just talked to the principal and the principal was like, you have to stand up for yourself. Yes. <laughs> and she's she a 27 year old. Yeah. She's younger than I am now. And she came in and was like, I'm going to lay down the law and these kids are going to respect me. She's like, get out. Yes. <laughs> like, what, lady? 
Oh my, I remember that like when you worked at a restaurant and there'd be a new manager and all of a sudden everyone's getting written up and you're like, I get it. I know what's happening right now. This is you putting putting Jews' heads on spokes outside. (laughs) That's your version of it. (laughs) Yeah. We're doing prison rules right now. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to even try to get to this year or something like that. I again want to make someone else a special. I don't know. But Mine was just to have more fun. More fun is a great one. More fun. More fun. So are we coming out of COVID now? Less into- weak spots. Less what? Like choosing better spots. Like I'm not doing, I'm not traveling an hour to Brooklyn to do, a, you know, a spot for two people. Right. On a weekday. I'm like, I could just stay home that night, enjoy hanging out with maybe Joe or like, Maybe going to a show and hang out with friends. Going to music? Yeah, going to music. We should be looking at the music schedule in New York and then picking out stuff well in advance before we even call in for spots and then be like, hey, you guys into this, you know this, and just trading ideas with each other or like, I hate that band, thank you, or yeah. I'll be in the road, but or like, oh, okay, I won't call in that week. Yeah. You know? Like just kind of like maybe cater my stand-up around my life rather than my life around stand-up. Yeah, especially as we were talking like on that hike, we're like, we're getting more spots than we were so it's like yeah and they're good spots yeah. I'm going on the road a lot more I actually feel like I can work out more new material on the road than I can in the city I'm anytime you're doing a longer set you're always trying to get more out of it yeah so a new line a new tag right 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 yeah a new story you a new to, idea you have time to like flesh it out yeah I was telling Norman and List Norman and no not Norman and List Norman and Schultz I was like guys we live in New York can we go drinking out away from the cellar and the stand? Can we just go to New York bars? I know. We have money and we live in the coolest city in America. And there's all these like interesting places to go to and I walk by them all the time and I see (laughs) friends hanging out and I'm like, uh, what's that like? Not your friends. People that have friends. Just people having like, like, what is that, a life? Yeah. Whoa. So you just meet your friend, like you have three friends that can meet you. And just, you go out. And you eat dinner together. Like mine has to be under the guise of a podcast or, um, (laughs) or like, you know, let's do a sketch. I was talking to Anya Marina once in front of this, the old stand and Bonnie walks up. She goes, what are you guys doing? Unrecorded podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Bonnie's great. Uh, Yeah. Um, Yeah, that would be a nice one. Have more fun. Yeah, I want more fun in my life. Yeah. It's like we have to protect that shit. I just got an offer for, I think, Philadelphia, October 27th, 28th, 29th. And I was like, yes. Oh, actually, no. That's Halloween weekend. No. Yeah, that's a nightmare. I'm sure it'll be okay. I'm like, "Uh uh-uh, dude. Made that mistake in year one of comedy. No, thank you. Especially in Philly. Yeah. That's a drinking town. And they're, they're rough drinkers, They're going to drink. They're going to be screamy. And they're going to be in costumes. Yeah. And it's just like, it's okay. Let someone else do it. I'm like that with New Year's Eve shows. I've never been in the spot of like headlining, but I've watched Joe and other people do it. And they all come and hang out or open. And you're like, I don't really fucking need, need this. You're going to end life. the New Year's shows by 1140. Yeah. The, I don't want to do the, the countdown. The things start going. It's like. It feels like we're having to sing happy birthday to a table. Well, yeah. That's Everybody demeaning. Goes up yeah. And it's like happy, happy birthday. It's happy depressing. New Year's yeah. to us. To straight I'm like I want to be home with people I know. I don't want to hang out with people I don't know. Yeah, I love yeah. a house party. Love a house or party. Or the old when I was at the comedy store as an employee, mm. love that cuz it was all our friends. Yeah. And by 12:30 the staff would get sloshed. We had to have enough champagne for all the customers. We had to have extra. So we'd all be holding a half bottle of champagne on us and just loving it. Yeah. Yeah. That Those are fun times. Yeah, more of that. Um, I, did, I also want to have more fun on stage. Meaning like... Uh, That's a good one. Don't be tight. Kind of I'm not like... I have to memorize all these jokes word for word. I'm like, I should just like be in the moment and actually have fun and then go back to my jokes when I'm not having fun. <laughs> you, ever, you, ever, you ever do a joke and then realize like the city you're saying in it has extra relevance? Yeah. Um, and then if you don't own up to it, you literally realize later like, oh. Or if you do like, when I was doing that Jew hour in Salt Lake City and I was like, we had this like, talking about the destruction of the temple or something. And I, and I was like, we had this like main temple. This main ch- I was like, oh. Well, you guys get that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, uh-huh, we sure do. And I'm like, probably more than any other city in America, Salt Lake City understands what it's like to have a main time. So just owning up to that and being in the moment. Yeah, instead of just like, I'm going to do my memorized set for you guys and mm-hmm. not take in consideration of other stuff. I just had that recently because I do talk about like 
went to bring a gun into an escape room and it was right after the Kyle Ritt, it was the night of the Kyle Rittenhouse trial mm. and I was like I, it was only until later that night I was like oh I wonder if that had anything to do with that whenever I do school shooting jokes I, sometimes it would just I don't even back then I didn't read the news much and it would just get deathly silent I'm like <laughs> this sometimes goes both ways but this went exceptionally uh, wrong something happened yeah and then they're like it was today this morning was a shooting. <laughs> was, that yeah. makes sense that makes sense you think You're, I'm talking about this and I'm not somebody had been like oh yeah we just had um, all of our kids were shot today <laughs> <laughs> I did it in Miami with Big J and I asked him last night in San Antonio have you guys had one here and they're like no and whatever make jokes about it did it in Miami like have you ever had a, a school shooting here and they're like yeah the worst one yeah parkland yeah and i was like oh and then i made the mistake of just like anyway here's my bit <laughs> instead of like <laughs> instead why of like, not though <laughs> well like you kind of like like sh- shitty stuff happens all the time that you're like you kind of have to but there's got to be some opening up to it. it was like well then you guys will get this more than most some, yeah, some yeah. line Something of like taking I'll, you through it and you can get out of it by like have you ever Sometimes made a joke that's made the crowd go so quiet. And if like a new comic would be like, this is awful. But when you're older, more experienced, you don't care about that silence. You use that. You can use that silence for your advantage and get a bigger laugh off of that uncomfortableness. It's pressure and then a release. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But you need to build up pressure to get a real release. Yeah. So those are like good moments to have sometimes. Metzger's really good at that. I know. Um, Although every now, I don't know, it's still like a mess. Sometimes you're like, oh, you guys don't like that. Like, yeah, you, don't you call like it that. out and they're like, no, we don't. Yeah. And then you're like, <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> Have you seen a comic ever lean into something more and it just gets worse and worse? And you're like, oh, God. I do that. Mayday. Can't, can't pull out. Can't pull out. <laughs> and I'm like, stop. Stop doing this. And, but my body is like, we override you. We're yeah, doing it. I'm mad that you guys are letting, or you're winning over me right now. Like, I'm really upset about this. My body's like, we love a train wreck, Ari. I'm sorry. We're going to we're gonna go full bore on this um well these are great these are really good solid resolutions can yeah, is there any more. chance you have of keeping that like remember like every month or so like remember have more fun have more fun uh yeah i try to it just depends on whether the headliner or the club lets me the more fun i think is a real one you're right none of those dumb like like brooklyn shows if i walk in and it's like hey this sucks there's like six people here and and it's blaring music like i appreciate the invitation i'm leaving yeah I'm this not is not for instead me instead of like let me bear through it because i agreed I know. um it's just like have fun so like i'm out of here uh, i know i love the larry david story of like going up on stage taking a look at them and just being like Nuh-uh. nah i mean how cool is that you know that um um before him was uh red fox yeah. Uh, you know that story? No, I don't know that story. He I don't was, think I know. It was know. after they paid him a, a fee for a Vegas show. It was after um, Sanford and Son, and maybe they didn't promote it or something. And they, they there's this band playing as a mom, you know. <laughs> yeah. He comes out, there's eight people, and he goes, nah, and it leaves, and the band's like, oh, and they just start. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's cool. It's so cool. Yeah, just the ability you to don't go. Need no, it. no, no, no. Yeah, Thanks. I don't need this. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I get offers sometimes. Still based on it's not even their fault. They just don't know what my rate is or anybody's rate. Like, you want to come two hundred bucks to come do a show in Minneapolis? And it's like, oh no. Why? I'm like, you don't want two hundred bucks? I'm like, no, no, I do, but I don't think you understand. Like, I can I can make two hundred bucks in New York. Like, no, and it takes forever. And you're like, I don't even make any money from yeah. that. Do you know how much and, plane tickets are? And so it's just not feel bad. Just go, oh, no, no. thanks. I'm out of here. This won't help me happiness. Yeah. I'm sorry if you're upset, but it, I'm not going to be bad off for you. Yeah, saying no to that stuff actually feels pretty good pretty and great. empowering. Do you ever make a decision just to not do something and then your body gets this feeling of relief? and it's you euphoria. Just, you just know <laughs> you made the right decision. You're struggling over it. And then eventually like, I make, I don't know, can I guess cancel that? And she's like, ah. <sighs> yeah, you're, you're like, like yep. Like, this is the best thing I've ever done for uh-huh. myself. Yeah, self care. I decided I was trying to get these. I had this streak going of two countries a year. Last year was broken under good circumstances, but whatever. But like, uh, so I, this at the end, I'm trying to like get it done. You know, fucking Tony's like, stay home, stay home, and I'm like, no. But then like by the end of December, I'm like, I'm going to the Dominican Republic, and then I'm gonna go to Tahiti for New Year's. And then it was like, why? It's you're, you're fucking spending money on it. It's all, and I'm like. I don't know. I want to go somewhere. And then as soon as I made the decision, I was like, yes, I like this streak. 
Yes. I like it and I will pay for it and I enjoy it. Yeah, and they say that travel is the one thing that you'll never regret. Unless yeah. you just go to like a Thai prison. Yeah, maybe that. <laughs> <laughs> Even afterwards. I was talking to Bobby Lee. a great podcast story. Yeah, I was talking to Bobby Lee ooh, on uh, <laughs> Yoga with Ari this month. Um and he goes, you know, even those times you were beating me up and shit, when I was like scared to even come into the comedy store, it was the worst times of my life. He goes, looking back, I would not have changed those. <laughs> They're such good memories. Yeah. I have that with, like, yeah, with friends that you're like, that was actually really fun. And I'm glad that you kind of pushed me <laughs> to do something wild like that. Yeah. Yeah. At the time, you're like, I, I don't want to do this. And I can't believe we're doing this. Yeah. 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 All right, Sarah. Well, your is special it? is called... It's called Voluptuous Boy, but really, you know, listen, this, for all the wives and girlfriends of Ari's listeners, go listen to um, Lady Journey. Let's do that instead. Yeah. That's the main thing. I'll That's my up. podcast. Lady Journey that you with do. With Katie Hannigan. With Katie Hannigan. And it's an interesting one because it is sort of thematic. How would you describe yeah, it? It's like all the journeys that ladies take <laughs> with fem, or lady, anyone that identifies a lady, like it's all encompassing, but like course you know dudes, there's yeah. dudes yep. that have um whatever feminine energy but like what give me an example of a lady journey i don't know like i'm always oh so um like crafting sometimes i'll be like i'm gonna start crocheting and then i get on these like weird kicks or um weird diets like when i went on a keto diet yeah that i i feel like ladies are always um being like trying something new like we're trying to break the crack the code or something <laughs> to like happiness <laughs> <laughs> crafting is like a, there's all these craft stores in oh, texas yeah they're all over and like that looks like a great craft store maybe i'll get I, into it i just generally think people that are crafting are just like actually have addiction issues do you so it's trauma that's coming through to their scarf uh, interesting yeah do you have guests on uh no but we're we are open to it as like a patreon tier okay can i can i Suggest myself as a guest for a thing. Sure. I made kombucha over. Um, oh, that's a lady journey. It is right. That is a yeah. lady journey. And it was journey. so fun to do. And when you realize how you can just make it, and I'm like, yes. I'm gonna try to make one, and it's, I did. And the journey of it, that and pickling. Yes. It's like it's like <laughs> it's a lot of lady journey is also very Amish related. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There was one episode where Katie kept listing all the lettuces that she likes, and I'm like. I don't know what this is, but I love it. <laughs> All those different <laughs> lettuces to dudes. It's just like lettuce. That's the lettuce. <laughs> She's like arugula. You can have a kale. I'm like, I love people are talking about like eating ass and we're going through our favorite lettuces right now. I love when you talk to her. I was like, I like you overhear a conversation and you're like, a lot of times turmeric can be a great replacement for, and you just trail off. You're like, what the <laughs> fuck are they talking about? I, yeah. So yeah, we're just on a journey tarot cards crystals a lot tarot of girls like crystals yeah i'm in i have like scent journeys like i like home scents right now like um bath and body plugins i like my home to smell nice sure. food going on food cooks like baking cooking um Kicks. comparing like i i'm a huge cookbook fan like we i know you alice wanted to talk about alice and roman I'll at one point yeah um she's my girl I think she's awesome. I stan. <laughs> <laughs> but I also love Chrissy Teigen, so whatever. You can like both. Yeah, you can like both. <laughs> That's a great thing for the, in that world. Like, you can be both a Teigen <laughs> and a Roman. You can. You can like cats <laughs> and dogs. doesn't have to be either or. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that's such a specific part of the audience, uh, the part of the world that would understand what you can be both a Teigen and a Roman yeah. would mean. I love that. I yeah. love that when only people get that it's kind so of It's so specific. Way. Yeah niche yeah for sure sometimes you see a comedian make a joke and you're like no and like one guy dies laughing because it's about like ghostbusters 2 or something or like what I, and everyone else is like i don't know what you're talking about yeah jay has some of those where it's like too specific those are my favorite kind of jokes i remember having a joke where it would be like do you remember that scene in splash that movie that took place 40 years ago <laughs> it's such like it's like a five minute disposition just to, and it's like the weakest punchline of like an inside thing you're like that's what i want to talk about and do on stage all the time but like who's on board with that yeah yeah i convinced legion of skanks uh, they dressed up like the um Characters from the Wizard of Oz for yes. uh, Halloween, and I just convinced them oh, that's that I was perfect. like, oh, I've never seen that. And like, you never saw Wizard of Oz? Like, no, we were religious. And I just never got a chance to. Yeah. And I had, of course, but then they were explaining to me because of that the plot of Wizard of Oz 
throughout the whole episode. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, so is the so is is the good witch like also a bad witch? Like, no. And I'm like, is the Wizard of Oz also a witch? Like, yeah, what? what? Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. You're telling me all this. And I'm just pretending. It was so fun <laughs> to explain a movie that everyone has seen. Yeah. I play along with that joke. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like getting in depth and like very minute details in life that you're like, okay, this is only for five people, but I have to get this off my chest right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, buddy. All right, um, thanks for having let's me. Let's do the comedy for rednecks. Oh, it's time to go. It is. All right. All right. Um, yeah. Oh, we're on uh, Instagram at at Stalamash. It's those Stalamash? are S T O L L E M A C G. Slow it down. I know it's just like my first initial with my last name. S-T-O-L-L-E-M-A-C-H-E. You guys figure it out. O L L E M A C H E. S Tolamash. Okay, it'll be in there. Okay. Um, Guys, subscribe. Uh, subscribe to Lady Journey Podcast. Subscribe to this podcast, the, the, where the wherever you're listening or watching on YouTube, if that's true. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'll see you next week. With uh, all right, right, bye. Well, you guys, that's the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Me and my buddy here, Bandit, who saw snow for the first time and went fucking apeshit. Didn't you go nuts, dude? Remember when that guy? Remember when that guy was like, oh, your dog has my ball. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's Bandit. He'll do that. And he goes, well, can you can you call him? And I was like, uh, oh, I'll call Bandit, but Bandit ain't going to come. He'll just use that as a, he'll think I'm playing. He'll run away. And he goes, are you not going to call your dog? He got serious. He brought a red ball to a fucking dog park. Snow. All the dogs are playing, and uh, and I was like, okay. I was like, Bennett, come here. It's didn't come. And then I went to get her. Ben does this thing where, where uh, as soon as I get close, she goes and then runs. I'm like, I told you, dude. And then he's on the phone. He goes, this. F-, I heard him. He goes, this fucking guy won't call his fucking dog. He has my ball. Dogs don't know ownership. Anyway, so finally, Bennett was sitting. There and I got it. I was like, here you go, dude. No, like, thank you. Just like uh, new dog owners do. They fucking suck. I was never like that. Um, anyway, then three minutes later, he throws, I mean, not even three minutes, three minutes after Bandit got it in the first place. He gets the ball back, throws to his dog. His dog catches it, Cocker Spaniel, brings it back, throws it again. Some other dog just grabs it. Dude, you brought a shiny toy to a bunch of animals who love playing with shiny toys. It's okay. We can't go home with it. It's yours. But while it's there, it's, it's not yours. <laughs> it's, get, tell your dog to chase my dog. He won't catch him because you're fast as shit, ain't you, Bandit? Remember when I wrote on Instagram that you were so fast and that dog was trying to catch you? And I said you were like um, Hitler and those dogs were like um, the Israelis who never brought them to justice. And then Instagram um, banned my account because they said I was hate speech. True story. Okay, okay. So anyway, guys, that's the episode. Um, why don't you leave in the comments? If you're watching on YouTube, about your resolutions. Maybe I'll get in there and say dumb or not dumb. Uh, go to my Patreon. Oh, maybe I'll do that on Patreon. Maybe I'll go over, leave comments on the YouTube, and then on Patreon I'll go and read all the comments um, and I'll and about your resolutions and say how fucking st- stupid they are, how fucking moronic they are. <laughs> I got to do a Patreon this week. Uh, I'll do one at the airport. Um, all right, you guys, that's the episode. That's been Ari Shafir Skeptic, episode 454. Um, and no, I don't have anything to say about Bob Saget. That was a fuck up on my part. Uh, yeah, it sucks, man. He died. I don't know. I, did, I knew him okay. Just friendly with him for sure. Miss Pat, send your condolences to Miss Pat and Jeff Ross. They were like real close with him. Um, it sucks. There's nothing to say, you know? The guy died. I don't know what he died of. Uh, I found out. Um, 30, 40 minutes before I had to go on stage and I had to go on stage and then talked about it on stage. Go to my YouTube for that. Um, I was as respectful as I always am. Patreon.com slash Ari Shafir. Guys, that's an episode of Ari Shafir episode 455 ish, five, let's say. Do better, an unrealistic New Year's resolution podcast. For Sarah Tolomash, I'm Ari Shafir. Saying so long.